Hi, my name is Robert Farrell. I was residing in Connecticut when I decided to purchase a home in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. The home was not finished and needed to be completed. I hired a contracting company by the name of Witt General Contractors to complete the home. I paid the contracting company $1,300 to complete an estimate of expenses and the time that it would take them to finish the house. He estimated it would take 90 days and between eighty and hundred thousand dollars depend upon the upgrades chosen by me. I then opened a business checking account at Conway National Bank with Witt General Contractors, Wilbur Witt Jr. President and Kim Witt Vice President in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. It is important to mention that Kim Witt was employed with the Conway National Bank during this time. About a month into the project, Will Witt asked to borrow twenty thousand dollars from me. I stated it was okay, he could take it out of the construction account, and I would need the funds back in a month. He agreed. After three months went by, later Witt telephoned me and stated he had my $20,000 to repay me. But instead of returning the loan directly to me, he informed me that he had deposited the funds into the business checking account. I told him at that time the funds should have been paid directly to me and not put in the construction account, as that was a personal loan and had nothing to do with building the house. He told me he was going over budget on the project and he needed the funds to finish the project. The situation did not sit well with me and because I became very suspicious and concerned that the trust was gone between them and I knew he was doing me wrong. Directly after I, directly after I called the Conway National Bank to close the account or at least place a freeze on the account and wire the remaining funds to me. They informed me that I was only a signer on the account it did not have the rights to close the account, nor did I have any check writing privileges. However, I would be held personally responsible for any checks written on the account. I explained to Conway National Bank about the $20,000 personal loan that I had made to Will Witt, that he was to be paid back to me and that the funds were deposited into the account that I do not have any access to. The bank advised me there was nothing they could do at all that the account had been set up that way. I was confused as I had deposited $110,000 into this bank and I was unable to receive any funds. It wasn't until about a month later that I, went, that I finally got a chance to go down to Conway National Bank by myself and, and review up my business checking account to determine what was going on. I noticed there was numerous checks for personal use drawn on the account. There was also business checks from other customers deposited into the account and many questionable transfers of the account company's money being ran through my account that didn't pertain nothing to build on my house. I became suspicious and asked to see copies of various checks. My request was denied by the bank and I was told I would have to obtain a court order subpoena to do so, which I did. During this time I told the bank one of their own employees, Kim Witt and her spouse, Will Witt, had conspired against me to escort, extort funds from me and if they did not close the account I would go to the police. Conway National Bank agreed to place a freeze on the account and would have the legal department review it in a few days. The bank president called me and advised me that a mistake on the corporate authorization resolution form had been made and that I could now close the account and would receive any of the remaining funds. By this time, the balance in the account was only $4,400 roughly. I considered what transpired so far about the business dealings with Witt to be extortion. Once the freeze had been placed on the account, Will Witt wrote up an account, a contract stating that he would complete the house and would notarize a release of lien on a property if I would allow his wife to have exclusive rights to sell the home and I would have to release the funds, release the freeze on the bank account. In the contract that the Witts created upon the sale of the house, I would receive $340,000 for the property. The property would be listed at $399,900 and the minimum offer to be accepted would be $375. I have been told this type of transaction is called net listing and is illegal and was advised to seek assistance from one of their ombudsmans. The first ombudsman I went to see told me that I signed that told me that since I had not signed the contract, he was unable to assist me with any legal recourse against the wits. So I decided to sign the contract and went to see another ombudsman. The second ombudsman told me since I had signed the contract, he could not assist me. At this point, I knew I wasn't going to get anywhere dealing with 
any kind of legal help in South Carolina. Kim Witt, as well as the Conway National Bank, needs to be investigated for bank fraud. In, a, in an attempt to have this crime investigated, I contacted the police. The police made out a report and referred me to a local judge. The judge assigned an officer named Detective Deal to the case. Mr. Deal worked on the case for two days and told me he was being deployed to Iraq and would not be able to investigate the case. When I telephoned the police department to find out who would be taking over the investigation in Mr. Deal's absence, they told me they were short on help and no one was available at this time to work on the case. I have contacted the governor of South Carolina, the Attorney General's office, U.S. Attorney General's office, solicitors, ombudsmen, and even the FBI, and I've gotten nowhere. Every time I search out any legal advice or assistance, I was questioned where I was from. As soon as I tell them I'm from Connecticut, I was unable to get any positive help. You know, I hate to, see it, I hate to say it, but South Carolina still does not like Northerners and Yankees, and uh, I, I couldn't get any kind of assistance from them just because I was from Connecticut. Uh, here's another example. So that the wits could uh, lean a free and clear property, attorney Stacy Stanley deliberately held up my closing so that the wits lien would prohibit me from refinancing the home so that to the Bank of America, you know, an employee from the Bank of America said he would testify that the closing was delayed and that no other closing he has ever seen in years it was like this. Uh, also, special referee Willard D. Hanna, Jr., resided over the trial. Mr. Hanna did not, he did not hear the proceeding fairly and paid no attention to the evidence. As an example, during the trial, uh, Kim Witt was asked how much money they had into the project. She stated they had $110,600. My attorney stated to the special referee, Mr. Farrell has given $115,000. Why are we even here? Special referee Hanna allowed Mr. and Mrs. Witt to go into a private room to come up with a better figure. During the break, I saw attorney Stacy Stanley and special referee Hannah having a conversation in the hallway. Shortly after the conversation, I see attorney Stanley on the cell phone. I cannot prove it, but I can only assume he was given a figure to the wits to come back into the courtroom with. During the so-called trial, every time things look tough or the wits having difficulty coming up with the proper answer they were asked, the special referee would go off the record. I can't even tell you how many times we went off the record during their testimony. The special referee in his final order stated there was no contract and no meeting of the minds between Farrell and Witt. He ruled in favor of Witt. My attorney filed a motion for reconsideration and nine months later the special referee Hannah changed his mind completely and ruled there was a meeting of the minds and a valid contract. Although the contract was not in writing, and ruled that the unjust enrichment is hereby vacated and granted a judgment on the mechanics lien. My attorney told me, according to the law in South Carolina, since Witt was to receive a percentage of the profits from the sale of the home, that the contract had to be in writing, and the special referee's recent ruling would not hold up in a court of law. I have all the court documents and transcripts to corroborate everything that I've say, stated, plus many other additional wrongs that took place like you know the, the checking account I, we couldn't even verify nothing on it because he's running other business checks through the account you know numerous checks for cash my attorney said the only reason he had all those he had numerous operating accounts in in the Conway National Bank was so that he didn't have to pay income taxes on the money he could just put it deposit in one of his many operating accounts and uh, take the money out in cash like he did through my account when he filed his mechanics lien he didn't even meet the South Carolina statute. You know, the agreement was invalid because it didn't have no verified statement of account showing the 115000 spent on the project. Uh, I have, you know, the only recourse I have is hoping that someone from the media will see this and, and try and right this wrong.